am Surya from NIT Warangal. This is a tutorial series on how to build basic electronic circuits. In this series, we will be learning about some simple components, then we do some simple projects before moving on to advanced ones. Thanks to the Laksha Foundation for sponsoring this tutorial series. Thanks to the Photography Club for helping me edit and record these videos. Let's get started. This is how a resistor looks like. The value of the resistance can be found by looking at the color bands on the resistor's body. You can look at the link in the description below to learn more. Let's keep this video short. Each resistor has a wattage rating, usually depending on its size. Here I show a 1 watt resistor and a 0.25 watt resistor. This is how capacitors look like. The first is an electrolytic capacitor. Electrolytic capacitors are used when high capacitance values are needed. The longer pin corresponds to the positive terminal and the shorter to the negative. Hence, you must make sure that you connect it with the right polarity in your circuit. The second is a ceramic capacitor which can be connected in either directions. They generally have a small value and the value can be determined from the numbers on their head. LEDs glow when current passes through them. The longer pin corresponds to the anode which connects to the positive terminal and the shorter to the cathode which connects to the negative. You can also find the positive and negative terminals of the LED by looking into its electrodes. The thinner electrode is positive and the thicker electrode is negative. The specifications of the diode, that is the operating current and voltage, depend on the LED's size and color. This is a 7 segment display whose LEDs can be glown by applying corresponding potentials to the pins behind. We can use these wires to connect our circuit. And this is a wire cutter. You can cut the wires by using the flat region of this cutter like this. Let's cut it again. Flat region, cut. And you can strip the insulation away by placing the wire on the curved region, holding it horizontally and click. Now you can take off the insulation easily. Let's do it again in the curved region and click. Take the insulation away. We can also use male wires which look like this. These can be used to connect the circuit as well. Let us see what's inside them. Let us cut it into two first. Then strip the insulation off. And as you see, there is only copper inside. The copper connects the pins internally. These are few 9 volt batteries that you can use to power your circuits. The round pin corresponds to positive and the hexagonal to negative. This is a battery cap. Let's plug it onto the battery first. We can use a battery cap like this to get the potential difference onto the wires. The red is positive voltage and black is negative. We can also use battery holders to hold the AA batteries to power your circuit. Here, let me connect 4 AA batteries in series. 4 into 1.2 volts is 4.8 volts. So this circuit gives a total of 4.8 volts output. You can use the cap again. We also have rechargeable batteries. It can be connected to the charger like this, which is in turn connected to the 230 volt supply. This is a breadboard. The best way to learn about electronics is to tear it apart. Let's tear the breadboard now. This is the top layer. Um, this seems to be sticky and I think I can plug it onto the wall. Let's look into it further. Let me remove the sticky layer. Wow, so here you can see how the breadboard is connected internally. The green lines show the metal connection in the vertical direction and the yellow lines show the metal connection in the power grids on the top and bottom. Notice that for this breadboard, the left and right sections of these regions are isolated. However, for some breadboards, this may not be the case. Let us see how the breadboard is connected internally. When I click the first dot here, you can see that all the dots on the horizontal line turn yellow, all the 50 dots, which means they are internally connected by metal. Similarly, let me click this. You can see that the 50 dots on the horizontal line turn yellow. Similarly here. So they are internally connected by metal. And in between, you can see that the dots are connected vertically. Press any dot, you see that the other four dots on the vertical line turn yellow. This is how a switch looks like. When you press the switch, a connection is complete between its terminals. These are some other type of switches which we'll be looking later in the series. 
This is a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, which means that the resistance across the first and third terminals of the potentiometer is 10 kilo ohm. It has a knob on the top, which can be turned by using a screwdriver. This is the internal diagram of a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. 10 kilo ohm is along the first and third pins along this. Uh, you can change the resistance between the first and second pins by turning the knob. As you turn the knob, this metal contacts goes left and right. And depending upon the knob position, you get uh, a resistance between first and second pins and in this case it is 3 kilo ohm. As you turn the knob to the minimum position, you only get 0 kilo ohm and as you turn the knob to the maximum position, you get 10 kilo ohm. These are some other types of potentiometers. This is a 1 and 4148 diode. The dark line corresponds to the cathode which must be connected to the negative and the other is anode which is the positive. The current flows in this direction. This is a 2N3904 NPN silicon transistor. If you look at it from the flat side, the terminals would be emitter, base and collector. An integrated circuit looks like this. We will go deeper into this later in the series. Integrated circuits are abbreviated as ICs. You can use an IC holder to plug the IC on it. So in this video, we saw some basic components used in electronic circuits. In the next video, we will use these components to build our first electronic circuit.